We are discussing various different approaches to staffing international operations, and in this topic, we are going to discuss regiocentric approach. Regiocentric approach, as the word is self-explanatory, is something which is originating from the regional approach. So, regiocentric approach is it means giving preference to a particular region. All right. So, like the geocentric approach, uh, the regiocentric approach utilizes a wider pool of managers, but in a limited way. So, a geocentric approach it takes the entire globe as a source and pool of human resource. Whereas a regiocentric approach, it applies the same approach but in a limited way, in uh, the way that the regional people from a particular region they are appointed for managing operations in that particular region. So, if a, an organization is a global organization, it may have different regions. For example, the America region, the America Americas then uh, the European region, and then the Asia-Pacific region could be uh, one of the settings of, uh, of uh, um, classifying different regions. Uh, if it is, um, um, if it, is um, it wants to go for more uh, regional uh, classifications, then it could be the Middle East, then it could be the Far East, then it could be the Southeast Asia, um, and um, Russia uh, as a separate one and Australia as a separate one. So, uh, it depends on how the organization classifies various different regions. So, uh, sometimes Australia, New Zealand is classified as a separate region. Uh, as, as a separate region. Uh, sometimes the Far East is classified as a separate region. For some organizations, Asia, Asia Pacific, which includes Australia and New Zealand as well, is classified as a one block of region. So it depends on how much a, or an organization has got various different operations in various different uh, regions and how, that is, how much that is given importance and separate classifications in a particular region organization. So, staff in, in this kind of an approach, in a regiocentric approach, the staff may move outside their home countries, but only within that particular geographic region. So, they, if, an, if, if it is Asia-Pacific region, so people from Asia-Pacific countries, they will not be moving to the European countries or the Americas, but they will moving in between the Middle East and the Southeast Asia and the China and uh, and and Middle East, uh, and and uh, Southeast Asia and all these different uh, categories. Then regional managers they may be promoted to headquarter positions, but enjoy a degree of regional autonomy in decision making. Uh, say uh, so so people uh, from uh, the, that particular region they may not be going to the headquarters. Uh, but they will have a certain level of autonomy and decision making within their own region. Why we would go for a regi regiocentric approach? The reasons is that uh, it facilitates interaction between managers uh, in uh, one particular region. So, uh, the resources, the culture, the values, the different type of management styles, uh, they can be mixed and they can be utilized and exploited in a particular region and that would lead to more interaction and utilization of, uh, of, of resources. Uh, because uh, people are appointed from the from uh, the same region, it reflects some sensitivity to the local conditions. Since uh, the local subsidiaries, they are usually staffed almost totally by the home country nationals. So, in a regiocentric approach, uh, regional people would uh, would be moving around in that organization, but mostly the pool of management positions is going to be held by the home country nationals because it is, uh, it is uh, mixing people in a relatively limited way. 
what could be the disadvantages of a regiocentric approach? Uh, it is a miniature replica of the geocentric approach. Uh, and a, uh, it, it also, it is something which is, uh, lies in between the geocentric approach and the polycentric approach. The polycentric approach gives complete autonomy to the national subsidiary. The geocentric approach uh, mixes the, um, all the subsidiaries and the headquarters uh, with, with each other, integrates them. So geocentric approach is something which uh, takes out the autonomy and decision making from the national boundaries, but puts another boundary, which is the regional boundary. So it could lead to a certain level of uh, federalism, uh, which is a disadvantage of the polycentric approach, but the th federalism would then move from the national level to the regional level. So now if, a if an organization has got three uh, regions, the Americas, Europe, and the Asia Pacific, it means that they will have a kind of federalism in these three uh, regions. And that is one of the disadvantages of a regiocentric approach. And uh, this uh, approach, it does uh, improve career prospects at the national level, but it, what it does is that it moves the barrier from the country, the national level, to the regional level. So there is kind of a barrier, whereas in geocentric approach, there is no barrier for anybody to move anywhere and progress anywhere in their career. But in a regiocentric approach, there is a limitation that, well, okay, you can be promoted to the regional level, but then that regional level is the barrier and limit, the limit for the career progression of uh, the human resources of that organization. So this could be taken as a disadvantage of the regiocentric approach.